Brothers and sisters, will you pray with me? Gracious God, may the words of my lips, may the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Amen. When I was in college, my family went on a week-long rafting trip through the Grand Canyon. The rafts looked like five giant blue bananas strapped together with a uh, motor and human guide in the back of each one. They take us through the rapids and help us camp on the shores. We could bring our own beverages for the trip, but for environmental reasons, we couldn't bring any glass. For my mom, it wasn't a vacation without wine. So she bought the finest wine in a box that money could buy. Franz, yeah. However, we didn't actually store the drinks on the raft, but in a net in the water tied to the back of the raft. So we had to leave the cardboard box behind and just take out that plastic bladder in, inside the box. And so this plastic bladder of wine would just float in the Colorado River, trailing our raft by day. And then each night we would make camp and my mom would enjoy a glass of wine fresh from the bladder. Now, they didn't have wine in a box during the time of Jesus. But they certainly had wine in a bladder. They were called wine skins, and they were simple canteens made of animal skin, usually goats. They held more than wine. They would hold water, olive oil, milk, even butter and cheese sometimes. However, if you put new wine that was still fermenting, still changing, into older, more brittle wine skin, sometimes it would burst. So Jesus loved to use parables about everyday life, which can make them weird to us 2,000 years later, but extremely relatable in first century rural Galilee. So he takes experiences that people have about mending their clothes and carrying wine for a journey, and he crafts this short, wise parable that is found in the second chapter of Mark, verses 21 and verse, verse 22. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old cloak. Otherwise, the patch pulls away from it. The new from the old. And a worse tear is made. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins. And the wine is lost. And so are the skins. But one puts new wine into fresh wineskins. Here ends the reading. This parable is shorter than most of Jesus' parables and much shorter than today's sermon. But this little parable, in my opinion, holds together the entire second chapter of the Gospel of Mark. Jesus is the new wine. He is something fresh and different. Just before telling this parable, Jesus forgives sins heals a paralytic, calls a tax collector to be one of his disciples, and then eats with the outcasts. Instead of fasting like the other disciples, his disciples eat and celebrate in the presence of their divine teacher. Yet, at every turn, he's being questioned and second-guessed. He's being criticized by the scribes and the Pharisees and by others for breaking customs. These are the old wineskins that cannot hold the new wine that Jesus is serving. It could be easy for us to judge the Pharisees and make value judgments about the old and the new. You know, a superficial reading of this parable is out with the old and in with the new. But this parable shows a concern for both the old and the new. You lose both the wine and the wineskin when you force a bad fit. Likewise, with the garment, what it needs to be repaired is not new cloth, but old cloth. Sometimes what is needed for healing is the, the shrunken and the worn cloth of history. Jesus loves this tradition. He is constantly quoting scripture and seeks to fulfill prophecy. He's not there to abolish his tradition, but he is there to change it. He's not interested in preserving the status quo. He's not interested in restoring the glory days of the past either. 
That's not why the Father sent the Son, and that's not why Jesus is going to take up the cross. Jesus didn't come to earth to take us back to the way things were before. He's here to lead us forward, to offer us redemption, resurrection, new life. And if we are going to be vessels for God's love, if, if we are going to try to continue the ministry of Jesus Christ, then we cannot be old wineskins. We have to be willing to stretch ourselves for the sake of the gospel. We have to have spiritual elasticity. We have to submit our own plans, our own sense of order, over to the Holy Spirit, which is always bubbling and, and fermenting like new wine. I cannot tell you how much my heart breaks for this church. After so many years in the wilderness, worshiping at middle schools and Masonic centers, when UCV is so close to moving into a sanctuary to call their own, the coronavirus hits and pushes even those of us with fancy, beautiful buildings entirely online. I can remember my, my first Sunday at Plymouth Church. I got there early and I wondered, what does a pastor do on Sunday morning if he doesn't help unload a truck, set up chairs, or straighten out the altar? Do I like sit in my office and pray or something? In less than four years at UCV, we had three different worship locations. And until we got storage at the Masonic Center, Dennis Wolf's pickup truck moved our church in a box from the community house in Old Town Marietta to Shavala Middle School or River Springs or wherever we were worshiping that day. And now, now you were so close. You could taste it. I was reading the newsletters, lurking in the background like, former pastors sometimes do, so excited that UCV had finally sold its property on Clinton Keith, was going to build a facility of their own for worship and community outreach. I saw the pictures of volunteers working on the new sanctuary. Then March came, and life was turned upside down for all of us. And now there's no easy answer on when to return to the sanctuary and how. And when, when we do, some of the most beloved parts of the body of Christ, our seniors, our immunocompromised brothers and sisters, our caretakers for the vulnerable, they probably won't be able to gather in person until there's a vaccine. <laughs> it's unfair. And it's especially unfair to you because you were so close. But maybe God is reminding you where, who you are. Maybe God is making you wander the wilderness for just a little while longer. So when you do get that fancy building, you'll know who you are, where you came from, and most importantly, to whom you belong. You know, as a full-time pastor serving a church that owns outright a uh, well-maintained building, I can attest these things can be huge blessings and assets for ministry. But doesn't matter if you have a permanent building and sanctuary. It doesn't matter if you have a steady, regular pastor. What matters is that you are a fresh wineskin. That you never grow brittle or rigid. That you always have that spiritual elasticity to stretch and grow with God. Because these are times of change. It's not just the coronavirus. Look at the streets. This rising generation is not going to accept systemic racism, homophobia, and the destruction of our environment. They are demanding affordable places to live, universal health care, and access to higher education. You know, hate might be in control of the White House, but change controls the streets. Things may feel chaotic, disordered, volatile, uncertain. But the Holy Spirit does that. And what this moment needs is not the shrunken cloth to mend the tear. It needs change. It needs new wine. And it needs those fresh wineskins that can carry it. Since 1993, United Church of the Valley has been a fresh wineskin in the Inland Valley. It declared itself open and affirming 
when anti-gay -big bigotry was running rampant. Indeed, it still does. You know, it declared itself a just peace church when the drums of war were beating and we foolishly invaded Iraq. And for the last six years, you have been navigating the off and the on of part-time pastoral leadership and showing the world how the lay model of leadership and pastoral care can work. And here we are, using technology to connect across 3,000 miles in the middle of a global pandemic. We're still the church. And I know a building isn't going to change you. It's not going to make you into something you're not. But still, still, guard your wineskin. Keep your wineskins fresh. Keep your spiritual elasticity as a church because this world needs you. It needs that dynamic, bubbling, intoxicating Holy Spirit to be held inside of a faith community and poured out into a broken world. And you, you can be that vessel. Thanks be to God, and amen.